Okay, so um, my name is actually Rayanch. I do go by Coffee on Discord. Uh, I'm giving my IGCC soon, and I really found this like a good opportunity to sort of you know share my skills and help everyone solve a few past papers, which might have some nice tough questions for all our benefits. So yeah, that's me. Yep, um, and I'm living, and I'm currently doing AS um, maths and further maths um, um, at Excel as well. And I did IGCSE with at Excel mainly. Um, and today we'll just be going through this one past paper. Um, and towards the end, if you guys have any questions regarding like tips, um, etc., you can feel free to ask them. Right. Um, so guys, we are going to be solving a particularly at Excel paper today. However. Do know that like especially the last few questions are applicable to all boards and it'll be really good practice no matter what board you are, CIE, AQA, or anything else. So yeah, do stay around for that. Okay, hold on. We'll begin then, guys. Right, okay, so guys, the first question is a basic one, as are the most questions really uh, starting off and an Excel paper, which is just making A the subject of the formula. Um, so what you would basically do in this case is try and get BD to the other side and then get A alone. So if you start off with the original equation of M equals to AC minus BD, you would then take BD to the other side, which would leave you with AC on the right side. Right, and to get A all alone, you would obviously have to divide C on both sides, which would therefore leave you with M plus BD divided up upon C, right? And that would leave you with A all alone, which would give you your final answer. Kevin, do you want to go with the next one? Yeah, sure. So I cannot see your screen, um, but I'll just... Um... I have it open on my thing. So um, the inequality, so to solve this, you'll do 5x um, is less than 39 plus 4. Um, so you should get x as 43 over 5, which is um, 8 as a whole number, 3 over 5. I think if you're writing that down, I cannot see it, so I have no idea. Yep, I have written it down. And guys, I'm, you, I'm pretty sure in most exam boards, you don't even have to convert it into a mixed number. You can just leave it as a top heavy fraction. Yeah, you you know, for Edexcel, you need to convert it into a mixed fraction. Yep. Um, oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. And the next one, factorize fully. So um, this is just 6e e squared f and the brackets 3f squared minus 2e. Right. And the way you would do it is basically just always take the lowest power of each one. So in this case, there's e squared, which is the lowest for uh, out of the whole expression. And then f alone is the lowest for out of the expression. And for 12 and 18, 6 would be the highest common factor. So you would take 6 outside and then inside you take 3. Since e squared is the lowest, you'd write that in. And then because f is the lowest, you'd write, sorry, wait, no, that is a mistake for mine. You take um, e squared outside and you take e squared outside and f outside and then you take the rest of it inside. So that would basically just be 3f squared minus 2. Okay. Minus 2. All right. Moving on. Um, so this is a ratio question and the trick to ratio questions is basically to add your three numbers always that should always be the first step in order to get like a common denominator good denominator so in this case if you did 2 plus 6 plus 7 you would have gotten 15 and uh, you would therefore divide 3 4 5 0 in uh, by 15 that's what you would probably do so you do 3 4 5 0 divided by 15 which would leave you with 230 Right, and uh, to work out the largest share, you would, uh, the difference between the largest share and the smallest share, two would be the smallest share and seven would be the largest share. So you would work out the ratio of two, work out the ratio of seven and subtract the two numbers. All right, uh, is Living still in the call with us guys? Right, 
don't think living is with us. She's supposed to be doing these questions, actually. All right, guys, we'll have to wait for living to come back. I'm really sorry. This is a little bit annoying and frustrating. But yes, she's having some technical issues. We'll have to go ahead with her. I'm so sorry about this. Okay, welcome back, Living. Right, yeah. Um, okay, so my thing is connected again. Um, but anyways, so which question is this? Give me a second. Yes, so we're on the ratio question. However, we're finished the ratio question. We're now in question number three. Okay, right, yeah. All person mm -hmm. is... Right. So, so Living, do you want to go through it? Yeah. Okay, so for this question, uh, Gopal is paid 20,000 rupees each month. Jamuna is paid 19,000 rupees each month. Um, they're both given an increase in their monthly pay. After the increase, they're both paid the same amount each month. Gopal is given an increase of 8%. Walk out the percentage increase that Jamuna was given. Okay, so for this one, you do... Um, so Gopal's is, original is 20,000. You do 20,000 times the multiplier, which is 1.08. To get her increased salary, which is um, twenty one thousand six hundred. Yeah. So we do have some answers in the chat. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Twenty one thousand okay. six hundred. Yep. Yeah. Um, then you do the original. Um, so you do twenty one thousand minus um, nineteen thousand two hundred. Which would be uh twenty four hundred, right? Yep. And yeah. you would uh change. You would to calculate the change, you would obviously put twenty four hundred upon the original value of nineteen thousand two hundred, uh, which would sorry, yeah, twenty four hundred, and that would give you uh one eight, and as a percentage, that would be twelve point five percent, which would be your final yep. answer. Okay. Yeah, so a person to change over um, the original times 100, that's it. Okay, the trick the question was to understand that. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the trick. Yeah. The next question would uh, is a general fractions question that uh, comes up quite often, actually, for two, three marks. And to be honest, it's a pretty easy four, three, four marks that you really should, you know, not drop. So the way you would convert this is by doing three times seven, which is 21, and add that to four. That would give you 25 divided by seven, right? And uh, you would take that away from one times uh, one times eight plus five. So that would be 13 upon eight. So that would leave you with 25 minus upon seven minus 13 upon eight. To get it into a common denominator, you would get it onto a denominator of 56, which would uh, then be 25 times eight and 13 times seven. So you would be left with 200 upon 56 minus 91 upon 56. And this would then give you 109 upon 56, which you can yeah, then you simplify out to. Yeah, and to mix fraction, yeah, that's it. So these ones are, the first few are pretty, very easy. Um, moving on to the next one. Um, okay, so this question. In the diagram below, P and Q are points on a circle with center. QT is a tangent to the circle. Angle OPQ is 18. Work out the size of angle PQT. Um, give a reason for each stage of the working. So here, you can see that the tangent cuts exactly at um, the radius for it. So that means that 18 degrees. That means that the, uh, the triangle is an isosceles. So the angle OQP should also be 18. If you just, yeah. 
So since right, that right, right, right. you know that um, angle PQT is going to be 19 mi 90 minus 18, which is 72. Yeah, just use um text if it's easier. Yeah, I'll do that. I just thought I would. Okay. Uh, so moving on to the next question, this one is oh, yeah. Um, also for the previous question, if you go back. You need to uh, mention the reason. So the reason is going to be the isosceles and the tangent at the conference um, theorem. Because um, two marks are for the reason and one mark is for the actual working. Yeah, OK, we're going to move on to the next one. So in this, uh, it says that the, uh, so one cylinder has a height of 1.6 meters and a radius of 0 0.56. And the first part of the question is basically just asking for the curved surface area of the cylinder. So to find the curved surface area of the cylinder A, we know that the formula would be 2 pi r h, right? And if we would enter that formula, that would be 2 times pi times the radius, which they've given us as 0 0.56, times the height. Okay, one, one second. So I think um, if you go back to the previous question, someone has a doubt. Oh, of course. Sorry, I'm not able to see yeah. that. Yeah, so um, basically you subtract from 90 an angle. Um, so the angle created by the tangent cutting exactly at one point at the circumference with the radius is 90 degrees. Always, that's the rule. So that's why you know that um, OQP is um, 18 degrees because obviously the same length of the radius each side. Um, and then you do 90 minus 18 to get the remaining angle. And yeah, you guys, well, We'll, we, you can, we can invite you to speak if you have a question, but um, please make sure it's appropriate. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. That's 90. And that so is, is this question clear to everyone? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, yeah, so the nine circle theorems are very important. If you're doing a Excel, they come up very often, and it's essential to actually know the Sort of circle theorems and how they work and get as much practice as you can so that you're confident with it when you attempt questions like these okay yeah, so, all right. so on, for this uh, one um yeah you do 2 pi times uh, 0 0.6 times 1.6 so the height times the radius and it's approximately 5.6297 so rounded 5.63 is your curved surface area Uh, moving on, guys. Uh, yeah, also, if anyone, one second. if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to type in the chat and um, any doubts on any of the questions and we'll answer. Yeah, of course. All right. So the next one, um, this is a similar shapes question. So B is similar to A. The height of B is 0 0.6. What are the radius of cylinder B? So we know that the um, height of a is 1.6 and the height of B is 0 0.6. So the scale factor there would be 1.6 divided by 0 0.6, right? Um, and then that is equal to 0 0.56, which is the radius. Um, if you use the friction method, 0 0.56 divided by R, R being the radius of B. And then you just um, do the calculation and rearranging, which should give R equals to 0 0.21. So guys, this is a very typical question following up to the previous question. So you normally get like a surface area question and then you get a similar a similarity question as well. And in this case, all we've done is just cross multiply the two values um, to find your answer. So that would just be 0 0.56 times 0 0.6. And then that would leave you with R equals to 0 0.56 times 0 0.6. And then you would divide that by um, 1.6 and that if you put that into your calculator you should get r equals to 0 0.21 which would be your final answer all right Any good so is, for this one, was guys? that question um clear to everyone okay so there's right there are okay, no okay. doubts on that one so we can move on yeah so um, this question is a four marker, so it does involve a little bit more working when you're working about it. Um, so 
So the way you would go about it is just go through the question. There are 28 students in class A and 32 students in class B. The mean is 72.6 in uh, for both classes and 75 for A, right? So the way you would sort of start off is by first, because they've given you the mean of B, you want to try and find out the mean of B, right? That's the objective. That would be X plus Y plus Z, and then you just have continuous values, and you divide it by 32, which is your total number of students, right? And then what you would do next is this 72.6 is the mean of both classes, right? 72.6 is the mean of both classes. So that would be X plus Y plus Z upon 60 because 32 is in uh, B and 28 is in A. So the total number of students that you actually have is 60, right? 32 plus 28. So that would be X plus Y plus Z and plus how many ever people you have divided the whole thing by 60 because that's the number of people uh, in both the classes, right? So we would then sort of get 60 to the other side. So you would get 72.6 six times 60, which would give you 4356, right? 4356.0, so, um, 4, 4, and that basically means that 4356 is the total of both classes, right? That's the total of both classes. So to find just one class, you would do 4356, minus x and you would divide that by 28 remember because 28 is the number of class students in class a because you're trying to find just the value of class a first and you can then substitute that to get b so you do 4356 minus x right upon 28 and you know that the mean of class a is 75 so you would equate that to 75 so you would then get 4356 minus x equals to 75 times 28 which would mean 4356 minus x equals to um, 2100. So minus x would equal to 2100 minus 4356, right? And that should then give you x equals to 2256. You'd get x equals to minus, minus you'd get minus x equals to minus 2256, and obviously that would mean x equals to 2256, okay? So that would be your B score, right? And then you would then divide that. So it's not your B score. So 32 students in B. So 2256 divided by 32, which would give you 70.5. Does that make sense, guys? All right. So um, is it clear to everyone? All right, I think, um, all right, cool. So this basically what you do is um, you're given the mean of um, both classes. So you use that to get the total of both classes. Then you um, basically take that away from uh, A's. The, you use X as the B score and your total is given. Um, and then you get the A mean and you use that to get the, the total of only B. Then B divided by... Um, 32 is the mean of B. That's basically it. Um, okay, so for the next question, if we can move on then. Yeah. Okay, so for this one, the range of scores for all the students in both classes. So we know that um, 57 is the range for A and the 49. So the highest value for A would be 39 plus 57, which is uh, 96. Yeah, um, and then the range of, so 33 is the lowest score in class B. Uh, so we basically do 96 minus 33, which is 63. The highest for both, um, the highest amongst both of the classes minus the lowest for both of the classes. Yeah. Okay. So all, all we've done is basically done 39 plus, um, 33 and then just sort of subtracted that to get your range okay yeah sure so um we'll send the solved paper in the chat once um we finish solving it yeah. all right the next question um if you guys have any doubts please feel free to use the chat um we will be asking yeah, of course 
Um, the next question, so um, this is a trigonometry question. Work out the value of x. Um, so what you do here is you use the SOCATOA rule. Um, so for here, the values that it are, there's the angle and there's 12.6, which is your adjacent. And you need to figure out the hypotenuse to use cos. Um, so it'd be cos theta equals to adjacent over hypotenuse. It's not the cos rule, but it is like the trigonometry cos, yeah. So you because so you, you have your adjacent and you have your hypotenuse. So cos fifty two equals to twelve point six divided by h, right? Okay, and then you just do h equals um twelve point six divided by cos fifty two. It would be twenty point four seven or twenty point five two three significant figures. Yeah. Okay. Any doubts on this one? Um, I don't know if Living's answer is. I've just seen it in the chat. Cosine rule. It's not cosine rule. It's the cost ratio that we've used over here. Okay. Uh, can we move on, Living? Yep. Okay, so for this question, um, it's a simultaneous equation one, um, pretty straightforward. Um, so you basically do, um, you equate one of the x's in the first equation, so x plus y equals 15. You times the whole of that, um, we can do times 5, because um, minus 5y is already there, which would give you uh, 5x plus 5y equals to 75. Yep, it is um, technically, yeah, elimination, yeah. And you can go by substitution as well. It is absolutely no problem. Yes, yeah, so five x plus five y equals to seventy five. Then you add that um, to seven x minus five y equals to three. And five and five would eliminate itself, yeah. so that yep. would be twelve x equals to seventy eight, which is um, six point five. That basically means, well, six, and we know that x plus y equals to 15, and x is, x is well, x is 6.5, we already found that, so 6.5 plus y equals to 15, so y would just be 15 minus 6.5, which would be 8.5. Yeah. yeah, this is elimination, yep. You're basically removing one well, of Do you guys the want us to show it with um, substitution as well? Okay no, I think um, this is the best method to use. for this. So um, we get x equals to 6.5 and y is um, 8.5. Yeah, we can move on to the next one if no one has any questions. Okay. Uh, I think someone's typing in the chat. Is that a question? Okay, um, we'll move on then. So in this question, the trick would always be because you've got two um, two bases which have the power of two already, you would want to make the remaining base with a two power as well. So we know that eight would be nothing but two cubed, right? So that would leave us, because this we can simplify that to two cubed. So that would leave us with two cubed upon two to the power of seven equals to two to the power of n. And we can then do 3 minus 7 equals to n, um, which would give us uh, 3 minus 7 equals to n, which would give us n equals to minus 4. Okay. Uh, Living, you want to go with the next one? Yeah, sure. So um, for this one, um, we basically, again, um, like because it's a multiplication question we just add the powers so minus six times four as in the powers would become minus 24 minus 24 plus five minus 19 so k is equal to minus 19 that's it okay yeah, quickly just note down the working so minus 24 plus 5, which is minus 19. 
Um, so going ahead with this question, it says a metal, a solid metal sphere has a radius of 0, 1.5 centimeters. The mass is 109.6 grams. Work out the density. So the trick would be to say the density equals to mass upon volume. Right, that would be the formula that you need to remember. I don't think it's given in the sheet either, so you have to know that. And density would basically just be, well, the mass we know is 1.5 centimeters, right? Um, 1.5 centimeters, sorry, uh, 109.6 grams, right? And we'd have to divide it by the volume, so we have to find the volume of the sphere, right? And the volume formula would be 4 upon 3 pi r cubed which would uh, just be four, um, 4 upon 3 times 1.5 cubed times uh, the times the height, uh, times pi. So that would give us 14.137. And therefore, now that we have the volume, we can simply do mass upon volume, which would be 109.6 divided by 14.137, which will therefore give us 7.7526. Is that clear, guys? All right, yeah. Um, so there are no doubts on that one, so we can move on to the next one. Uh, do you want okay, to go so for the this theory? one, um, this is a yeah angle question, right? So the diagram shows a hex CDEF. BC is parallel to ED. Work out the size of the obtuse angle DEF. Um, so for this one, you want to work out the total of the interior angles, which you do um, n minus 2 times 180. So 4 times 180 is 720, which is your total sum of interior angles for this um, specific hexagon. And then you're given um, all of the angles. So you essentially um, 720 minus the rest of them, which is 50 plus 96 plus 144 plus 42. Um, right, okay, and then since 138, um, okay, yeah, because that's, so the angle um, CDE would be 138 since um, those are um, co-interior angles. So you do 180 minus 42 as, it, as the parallel lines um, go across. So basically 720 minus 470, yep, which is 250. That's your um, reflex angle. Yeah, and then to work out the obtuse angle, you do 360 minus 250, which is 110 degrees, yep. Uh, moving on, guys, the next question is uh, probability related, and it's one of the most like common questions that I've seen when I, when I, I was doing past papers. They ask it all the time, so do be confident with it. Um, so it says, Felix has 10 cards, 5 red, 4 blue, and 1 green. He takes one random card and does not replace it. He then takes a second card. So to complete the probability tree diagram, so 5 tenths is the red. Um, well, the second card being red, the probability would be 4 9. Because remember, 10 were there before, but he's already taken one, right? So there's 4 red and there's 9 in total. So this would be 4 9 over here. And then uh, if for blue, it would be 4 9 as well. Because remember, uh, sorry, it would be because there are 4 blue cards and there's 9 cards remaining. So that would be 4 9. And for green, again, there's 9 cards remaining. There's 1 green card. So it would be 1 9. Uh, for red, because, um, well, four tenth. now there's nine cards remaining because remember you've taken one blue card out. So then there's, but there's still five red cards remaining in the deck. So you'd have five nine. And then for blue, because there's three blue cards remaining and nine cards overall, it would be three nine. And for green, because there's one green card upon nine, so one nine. And then for green, uh, again, for, for red, it would be five nine because there's nine cards remaining. For blue, it would be four nines, and then for green, remember the trick is it would be zero because you've already taken one card, right? There was only one green card, but you've already taken, and you've not replaced it. it again, over here, very clearly says you've not replaced the card. As a result, because you've already taken one, there's zero green cards left. Uh, 
Um, is that clear, guys? Yep, so, so for the next question, the probability that he takes at least one blue card and no green card is, um, so the probability for one blue is 5 over 10 if you move up to the diagram. Yep, here you go, over here. So the probability of at least one blue card is 5 over 10 times uh, 4 over 9 since the red method, and then you, um, one more blue would be 4 over 10 times, um, so that times 5 over 9. So it'd be pretty long. Um, yeah, 4 over 10. I'm over sure, we're basically working out a problem. Um, guys, with such questions, it's very important also to remember the or and and rule. So when it's and, you would multiply it. And for or, you would always add it. That's very important. Is that okay, guys? Any doubts? Okay. Um, Living, is that clear with you as well? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, I don't think there are any doubts on it. So what we you want at least one blue and no greens so um the route you can choose is red blue and uh blue red blue blue um obviously not blue green and then yeah that's all you can do so you'd have um 20 over 90 if you like sum all of those probabilities together all three of those 20 over 90 plus 20 over 90 plus 12 over 90 which in sum should give you 52 over 90. Yep. Yeah, and that would be, be careful to read these questions because the at least can like trick you because if it says at least that means that um even if it's like double or triple like repeated you need to like count those um probabilities not just like leave, leave them all. That's a mistake a lot yeah. of people in my your yep. Yeah. As long as you follow that and also the and or rule and probability you should be fine with such questions attempting attempting. Okay, right. So there's a question. Uh, um, the difference in calculation for replacement and non-replacement in the question. So for replacement, if you just move back to the question, the previous one. Yes, of course. Yeah. So for this one, um, there's no replacement, right? So that means that each time he takes a card, um, the bottom fraction total of the cards decreases. So it goes from 10 to 9. If there was a third round, if there was a third card picked, it would go to 8, so on. For that case, you just to find the probabilities. You would go across branches um, for your root part, and you just times them um, depending on whatever the question is. And then for non for replacement, you'd obviously um, if you take out a card, the total of that. Let's say if it's like a red card and there are five as in this question, um, and one card that would become four. But the total um, because uh, it's replacement the total would still um, stay the same. And that's basically it. Um, but yeah, it's just, it just depends on the total and the number that you take out. So just be like very, very careful with that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense, Juma? Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. So we'll move on then. Uh, so this is a cubic graph question, guys. Um, it may yeah. be a little bit hard for us to draw the graph on here, but we'll discuss the values and the shape. Yeah, anyway, so for this one, I think we can skip the A and B parts because it's pretty straightforward. It's just um, calculating the Y values and then uh, drawing the um, cubic graph out. Um, and then for C, if we move on, for question yeah. uh, 14C up. Okay, so let's say we have the graph drawn anyways. So by drawing a suitable straight line on the grid, um, five estimates for the solutions of the equation y cubed um, minus 2x squared minus x plus equals to zero. Yeah, so we can take a table because um, it's like you just substitute the x values into the equation to basically. 
um, since we are not going to be drawing the graph anyways. Um, yeah. OK, so for this question, yeah, write out the equation. So for these ones, compare the actual equation to the given equation. Yeah, OK, so that's the actual one. And the given one is, as you can see, the difference is that right. the one has minus uh, 3x and this one has minus x. And there's also a plus 4. This one has plus 1. So what you do is you, um, given you'd see the difference, so you do um, the actual equation, which is y cubed minus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals to minus 2x plus 3. Yeah. So, um, yeah, if you put it, if you put it back on the other side, it would make sense. If you yeah, so to the power of three basically just means the cubic graph, so it's going to have um two curves depending on the gradient. Yeah, you can use the calculator as well on it. Yeah. Just remember, it's, cubic graph it's pretty time um, convenient if you do use a calculator. Yeah. And the only difference is a quadratic graph would only have one turning point, but a cubic graph would have two different turning points. So that's all you have to remember when you're drawing. Is this question clear? Yeah, okay. So for for this one, you basically just um you draw the line that says y equals uh, minus 2x plus 3. And you'd compare that with your already drawn graph. Um, and wherever it intersects, it should be at three points since x is squared. It's a cubic graph. Um, those are your roots for this, so for this equation. Wherever they intersect, basically just if we see the point of intersection over here, guys, and that yeah. would be your. So solution. we do. Um, we basically try to get. Yeah, we do kind of equate the equation. So we try to get um the original equation back into the form. So where it's y equals the original one, and we figure out what the value of y is. So we just do y y y um sorry x cubed minus 2x squared minus x minus 2x plus 1 plus 3 equals to 0 to get back from the given equation to the original equation. And if we move all the extra stuff, which is um, your minus 2x and plus 3 to the other side, you should get um, your line. Yeah. We can just write it out fully in this format as well if you want. Yep. So y is minus 2x squared. Minus six minus two x plus one plus three. Yep, equals to zero. And then um, y cubed minus two x squared. Sorry, x yeah. cubed plus two x squared minus three x plus four. Yep. So after that, you would uh, let's go. On. Is that clear, guys? Can we go on to the next question then, or is there any doubts in that? You just remember to try and equate them and then see wherever they intersect. Okay. If there's any, yeah, I think we're good to move on. All right, okay. Um, so guys, this uh, next question is on bounds. Um, you often get these for two, three marks, AO, uh, level level six, level seven style. So guys, the trick to this, whenever you think, obviously uh, you have to, it says lower bound, right? And whenever you want to find a lower bound, you want to find out the lowest possible difference. So you would take the lower bound of the first value and subtract that with the upper bound of the second value. That's the key to remember this, right? Okay. So if you, if you keep that in mind, you would then take 8.31 uh, as your first number. Since e is the first number because it's taking e minus f, we would have to take the lower bound of 8.31, right, uh, to two decimal places. The way to remember it is basically whatever decimal places it is, right? In this case, it's two decimal places. Try and work out the next number with two decimal places and the previous number with two decimal places. So in this case, the previous number with two decimal places was 8.30. 8 and the next number with two decimal places would be 8.32, right? After you work that out, it's all a case of working out the midpoint of 8.30 and 8.31. So that would be 8.305. Okay. 
and you do the same for 0 0.65, right? The next number with two decimal places would be 0 0.66 because you have to work out the lower bound in this case. So the midpoint of 65 and 66 would be 655, right? So your upper bound would be 0 0.655. Once you get that, you all you have to do is 8.305 minus 0 0.655, right? And you would get, um, you would get, uh, in this case, you would get 7.650 as your final answer, or you can just write 7.65, okay? That makes sense, guys? Let me know, guys, if anyone needs me to explain it again or doesn't understand it, please. Yeah, I think everyone's good with the question. We can move on. Okay. Uh, do you want to go with this one, Living, or no? Uh, yeah, okay. So for this, R is proportional to T squared. The graph shows the relationship between R and T for uh, the given range, that is. Um, find a formula for R in terms of T. Okay, so we know that R is proportional to T squared, so you can use the um, symbol to write that out. Um, so R is the proportional sign, K T squared, um, K being your constant, since it's um, proportional, yep. Okay, so then choose um, two points on the graph um, to figure out the value of K so that you can figure out the equation for R. Um, so you do, you can take R, as, let's see, um, 40 is a good point because it's exactly like 40 and 4 um, on both the axes. So you could do 40 equals to K. Yep, K times 4 squared. Because it's T squared. Yep, um, which should give you um, 40 divided by 16. Which is equal to 5 over 2. Yep. So that gives you K, the value for K is five over two. That makes sense, guys? Yeah, uh, it's the other way around. So five over two T, uh, five oh. over two T squared. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's the fraction for Yeah. Okay, so the next part. Okay, so I don't think so. Um anyways, for the next question, um R is equal to eight over five X. Um show that T is inversely proportional to root X for um T is more than is greater than zero. All right, okay. So for this question, we know that um if it's inversely proportional, that means um the K is the root x is being divided right so what we can do is um set out the equation 5 over 2 t squared equals to 8 over 5x so we e equate both of the given r values and then we yeah. um t by itself so we just rearrange yep so we get t squared to um, 3.2 over 5x if you move the, um, yeah. All they've done is just, yeah, good. Yeah, and then you do t equals to root um, of the uh, whole thing. Yes. You would get t equals to sorry, t equals to zero point. If I'm not mistaken, is that a uh, living t squared equals to zero point six four divided? Well, you could also, by the way, divide it by five uh, just to make it your life one easier. So you do three point two divided by five and five x divided by five, so you get zero point six four upon x, right? And then you get t equals to um, root. 0.64 upon x. Yeah, and then um, basically in the end, you should get t equals 0 0.8. Yeah. 
over root x, which shows that it's inversely proportional to um, t is inversely proportional to root x, since s at the bottom it's being divided. Yes. Uh, any doubt, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I don't think there are any doubts, so we can move on. Um, so, okay, in this one, you'd have to find dy by dx. So this is a simple differentiation where you would multiply the coefficient with the power and then take one away from the power. You would end up with 3x squared because 1 times 3, 3x squared. Multiple, uh, 3x squared minus minus 2 times 2, which is minus 4, and then x because 2 minus 1 is 1, minus 4x, minus 15 times 1 is minus 15, uh, and x uh, is x would obviously cancel out because it's 1 minus 1 to the power of 0, so it would just cancel out to 5x squared minus uh, 4x minus 15, sorry, 3x squared. Yeah. Is that understood? Living, do you want to go with the next one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so for this question, C is the curve with equation y equals x um, cubed minus 2 minus 15x plus 5. What are the range of values x for which C has a negative gradient? Um, so for this, you just use the normal um, calculus. Um, is you do 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. That's your d by over dx. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yep. And you'd equate that to less than zero because um, obviously negative gradient means a negative value for the gradient. Um, and then you just um, factorize that. So you do 3x squared minus 9x plus 5x minus 15, which should give you, um, yeah, minus 9x plus 5x minus 15 is less than zero. Less than zero, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yes. And then um, to factorize that, you just get brackets 3x plus 5. Sorry, yeah. x minus so, no, you put the brackets and then inside the brackets, um, 3x plus 5. And the other bracket would obviously be x minus 3, less than 0. So that would then give you x equals to 3 and um, x equals to negative 5 upon 3. OK? Yeah. And then because it asks for the range, you need to put it in the um, format. So you'd say minus 5 over 3 is less than um, x. Like the range x in the middle and then um x is less than uh three that would be a range i hope that makes sense guys is there anyone who needs help with it okay so okay. Uh, moving now, on so this one, nope Sorry. okay cool Okay. Um, that's, so that's the last okay, so for basically what we did is we figured out dy over dx um, to get the gradient um, equation, which is 3x squared minus 4x minus 15. And then it says we need to work out the values of x for which c has a negative gradient, which means we equate it to, um, we don't equate it, we do it, um, the equation less than zero um, is equal to less than zero. Um, and then we basically factorize the left side the dy over dx equation. Um, and you should get x equals to 3 and x equals to minus 5 over 3. It's just normal factorization. Um, does that make sense? All right, cool, great. Um, any other doubts? OK. I think a lot okay, of people no. understand cool. it pretty well. Right, okay, the next question. Um, 
to move on. Okay, so a triangle has size of length eight centimeters, centimeters, centimeters. What are the size of the largest angle of the triangle? Um, okay, so for this one, we just like first of all we draw a, a rough sketch. Um, so eight, ten, fourteen um, are your sides that are given. And basically, for this one, um, you just use cos cosine rule. Correct, because you'd have to remember that the largest angle is always the one opposite to the largest side, which is 14, and you would then just substitute the cosine rule to find your answer. Yeah. You know that cos A would be B squared plus B squared plus B squared B C. That's the formula for cos A, guys. You then substitute the values, so you get 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 14 squared, and you would put that upon 2 times 8 times 10. And that, if you put that into a calculator, you should get um, cos A equals to 101 point, uh, sorry, equals to 101.5, which you can then put as cos minus 1. So A would therefore equals to cos minus 1, and that would be 100 plus 64 minus 196 divided by uh, 160. That would be your answer. Is that understood? One point five is what you should get if you do it on a calculator to be significant to one decimal place. Uh, do we need to explain this one more time, or do you get it? Okay. Uh, Living, do you think we should go with, go ahead then? Okay. Yeah, there are no doubts. I think you just move. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so moving on, guys, question 19. Okay, right, this, so this your, question, um, um, yeah, so the triangle shows, um, the diagram shows a triangular prism. Um, the lengths are given, um, angles, angle FAB equals to angle BC equals to angle BCD equals to 90. So that means it's the bottom plane is um uh what do you call it rectangular um and then work out the size of the angle between BE and plane ABCD. Give your answer. Okay. So for this question, you basically um need to work out which triangle we actually need um to use. So BE and the plane ABCD. Um, as you can see, we'd use the angle we'd use the triangle DEB for that one. Do a quick sketch. Yeah, I'll just draw quickly. Sorry about this, guys. I'm using my touchpad to draw, so it's a bit wonky, but let's try it out. It's not shaping me, so let me do Okay. That would be your hypotenuse. That would be a right angle. And as we know, that's 10 centimeters. Okay. Because that's a rectangle, so yeah, we would then just solve it. Do you want to continue? Yep. Okay. So we have the D E B um B E D triangle done. Um. Then we need to figure out the value for um. So D B right um, which we can do because we have um the A B C D. We have the right angle triangle triangle A B D. Which, if you draw a quick sketch again, um, better to visualize it. So you'd have eight on um, AD is eight, then AB is twenty-four. So you just have to work out DB for that. You can use phi tag, and um, C equals to square root. If you just write, it actually, we'll leave this, but just yeah. That would be your. This is what she's trying to say. 
you have that part. And we need to work out the DB. Um, so for that, just use cover theorem. Um, and you should get root of 24 squared. X equals to um, root of 24 squared, right? And that would then give you. No, also um, root, root 24 squared plus 8 squared. 8 squared. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Better to leave in that form okay, until the end so that you don't have any um, issues. Yeah. So and then um, you have you. Yeah, then you have dB out. So to work out um your angle, which is um B E D, right? You just do tan x equal tan theta equals to opposite over adjacent, which um so your opposite would be 10 and your adjacent would be just um the 24 squared plus 8 squared, the whole thing square root, the stuff you would just work. Then you just um do tan inverse. Um I think, yeah, can you just use text because it's easier? Uh, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, right. So tan x equals to 10 over the square root stuff. Oh, 24 squared plus 8 squared. Yeah, and then you do tan so inverse. Um, yeah which would give you 21.6 degrees approximately. If you put that in your calculator, that would give you 21.621 degrees, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So any doubts about the question? Okay, so no doubts. Um, we can move on to the next. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it says six of these would be that are oh. worth weight less than. Okay. Yeah. So the histogram shows information about the birth babies. Um, six of these babies had a birth weight less than two point five kg, or greater than four kg. What are the number of babies who had a birth weight between two point five and four? Okay, so the values we are given um, are only is the six part. So we know that less than 2.5 and greater than 4 kg. So we can work out the number of squares that represent x um, by doing basically um, if we go to 2.5, right? And then that takes up about five times four of squares, which um, if you just, yeah, if you can just write that out. Yes, um, sorry, I'm just having a few technical issues right now. Yeah, I, it's, uh, my voice it's lagging a lot, but yes. Yeah, sorry, okay. sorry about this, guys. I'm so sorry. Um, six of these babies are. Can you just, if you could just um, assess with the information again, so that would be. Yeah, okay, so um, what yeah. you do is you need to work out the number of squares which represent the six babies, All right? So you do four times five plus. Um, one times okay that's 10 one times 10 yep um which is 30 squares for six babies so uh, you'd work out how much does one um like how many squares is needed to represent just one so you do 30 divided by six which is five yeah okay um then we want to work out the weight um the number between 2.5 and 4 so we do um all of the ones in the middle of it. So from 2.5 to 3, it is 5 times 4 again. Um, so we do that. We need to do, so calculate the number of, um, of squares there are. Five. The next one would be um, 4 times 20. That would be 3 to this part over here from that. 4 times 2, 20, yep. Plus uh two times I think that's two times twenty-five. Yeah. Yeah. Plus four, four times fifteen. Yep. Okay, let me sum that up, which should be twenty plus 10. Uh two hundred ten, yep. 
Okay, now that is the number of squares. Now to work out how many babies that actually represents, we just do 210 divided by 5. It's 42 babies. Yeah, okay. So, um, a question? Uh, yeah, is that clear, guys? All right, cool. So um, everyone's good with it. We can move on to the next one. Um, okay, so this is again a sword question, pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. We just need to get the basic, the base sword part correct. So root 45, what can that be written as? You can write that as nine times five. Um, 20 can be written as root four times five. And then obviously your, um, we need to show that it's equals to five root five. So, yeah, okay. So three root five, um, cause you square root nine and you leave the five in sword form. Okay, if you just, yeah. So it's three square root five. That's the first part, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, and then once we like simplify the nine and the four out, it should be three root five. Uh, yeah, that would be three root five yeah, yeah. two root five. Yeah. Yep. Just write that off. Uh, root four, as we know, would be two, so two root five. So you'd be left with three root five plus two root five. Yeah, which is five root five. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, in the next part, we'd have to rationalize the denominator. That would be the trick over here. Rationalize since it's a binomial in the denominator. Uh, we'd have to basically do the opposite. So if it's root 3 minus 1, you'd have to multiply that out by root 3 plus 1. Because the whole objective is to get the third out of the denominator and into the numerator. Um, so you do 2 upon root 3 minus... So you do 2 times root 3 plus 1. Yeah, not be 2 times root 3 plus 1. And then you would divide that by root 3 minus 1 times root 3 plus 1. And yeah. Any questions so far? Yes. Yeah, I don't think so. So um, once you simplify that out, um, it should your final answer should be root 3 plus 1. That's, yeah. Yes. You need to simplify until you get root 3 plus 1. Uh, any questions, guys, or can we move on? Um, so I think, um, Tuba, are you not sure about the question? About the working out? You want us to explain it once more if you're finding it a little bit confusing, Tuba? Okay, right. So for this one, okay, right. Um, you're, you have 2 over um, root 3 minus 1. And then to work out in the form that's given, you need to rationalize um, the denominator of the sword. Um, so you, as it's shown, you just do root, you multiply the whole expression with root three plus one. Um, that's as the rule says. And then once you multiply it, you can um, expand and get two root three, yep, plus uh, two root three plus two, yeah, over, if you just put brackets around the second part so it's clear, like after the divide. Yeah, yeah, cool. So plus two divide um three plus one root three minus one root three. So the root the root threes cancel out. Um so at the bottom you get three mm -hmm. minus um one, which is two. Yeah. And you can just write the whole thing by two. Because yeah. be two root three divided by two, which is root three. 2 divided by 2, which is 1, and then 2 divided by 2 is 1, so it's a denominator of 1, so you don't need to write it. So you'd get this as your answer. 
Yeah. Um, is that clear now? Right. Okay, great, Tuba. Um, do any of the other people have a quick question or anything? Okay, um, so can we go on then, guys? Right. Okay. Uh, so the last one is basically just a simple completing the square question, but it involves thirds. So, you know, the format would be x plus b minus b upon 2 the whole squared minus b upon 2 the whole squared plus c that's the format to complete the square so you would be you would do x plus 6 root 2 upon 2 the whole squared and you would take that away with 6 root 2 upon 2 and and uh, that would again be squared and then you would take that away with 1 okay that makes sense Living this out. Is that okay? Okay, so um, 6 root 2 upon 2, obviously you do 6 divided by 2, which is 3, so that would get down to x plus 3 root 2. Right? Uh, and then again, in the in the in the bracket, in the second bracket also 6 root 2 divided by 3 would be 3 root 2 the whole squared minus 1. Um, yeah, sorry guys. Um, so that would then again simplify to x plus plus three root two the whole square minus and three root two the whole square would simplify to minus eighteen minus one. So that would be x plus three root two the whole squared minus nineteen. And that would be your final answer. Uh, understood guys. Is that understood, guys? Oh. Uh, let me just move on. Okay, this one is. We'll just quickly rub this all out. Yes. Sorry, one second. So that would be two R minus two.
Yes. Can you see it now? Four, so that would be twenty eight, would be twenty eight, right? And then uh, twenty eight upon two equals to two r minus two, right? Because you take the two to the other side, so two r minus two equals to twenty eight divided by two, and two r minus two equals to fourteen. That would then be 2r equals to 16 and r equals to 8. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, uh, so the next part, uh, Tanisha, uh, Living, do you want to go with it or should I? We five times sixteen, which will evaluate to be three. Would get x equals to minus 20 or x equals to 4 and obviously because it's a length a length cannot be negative so your answer here would be x equals to 4. Does that make sense guys? Okay I think it I think most people have understood the question Actually, I'll move on to the next one in that case. Um, so the sum of the first 48 terms of an arithmetic series uh, is four times the sum of the first 36 terms of the same series. Find the sum of the uh, of the first 30 terms of the series. Uh, so in this case, you would use your um, S equals to N upon 2 times 2A plus N minus 1B formula. Uh, just if you give me a minute. Sorry, guys, I'm having a few technical issues and my screen is working for me. Just one second, I'll just try and figure that out. Okay, can you can you guys hear me fine guys? Is it okay? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just talking to you. Okay, um, so the way you would do this is the first thing you would note down is that the sum of the first 48 is sum of the first 36 times 4. Yeah. And you know that the sum of the first 48, the formula would be n upon 2, so 48 upon 2 times 2a, right? We don't know what a is as of yet plus 47b, right? Because that's your formula. And this would equal to, well, sum of your 36. And well, your sum of your 36 would be 36 upon 2 times 2a plus 37b, right? If you simplify both of these, your sum of your 48 would come to 24 times 2a plus 47b. And the sum of 36 would come to 18 times 2a plus 37b. Does that make sense so far? The next step is they've said that the 48 is 4 times the sum of the 36. So 
So what that must mean is 24 times 2a plus 47b, which will, by the way, come out to 48a plus 1128b. That must equal to 4 times 18 times 2a plus 37b. So the whole of sum of 36, and you're going to multiply that out by um, 4, right? And when you simplify all of that, you would get... You should get a uh, 144a plus 2520d, right? And now you have a very nice thing where you can put all the like terms together. So uh, you uh, get zero, you get zero on this side, and you get 96a plus 1392d, right? You take both of the 1128d and 48a, you subtract them to the other side, and you get 96a plus 1392d. And well. You can then factorize that out. You can say, well, you can take 48 out there. And that's always useful because 48 is the first 48 terms. So you're going to take 48 out. And well, inside, you're going to have 2a plus 29b equals to 0. You can then do 48 to the other side. Well, 0 divided by 48 is simply 0, right? So 2a plus 29b equals to 0 divided by 48, which is going to equal to 0. So you get the equation 2a plus 29b equals to 0, right? Now you can then, well, now the thing that you have to remember is it's asking for the first 30 terms, which means that when you put in your sum of the formula, you're going to do n minus 1, and n minus 1 is 30 minus 1, which is 29. So what we have over here is absolutely perfect, right? Because when you find your sum of your 30 terms, what would you do? You would do 30 upon 2 times 2a plus n minus 1d, and n minus 1d would be nothing but 29d, right? 30 times 30, 30 divided by 2 would be 15, right? Multiplied by 2a plus 29d. Right? Now we know that 2a plus 29d over here is 0 because we've already worked that out over here in this part of the equation. So we can simply replace 2a plus 29d by 0, right? So we're going to do 15 times well, 2a plus 29d. Well, that's 0, so that's going to be 0. And as a result, sum of 30 terms after doing so much working, 15 times 0, well, that's 0. So the sum of the first 30 terms of your sequence would be 0 then that would be your final answer. Does that make sense? It is It is quite a bit uh, to take in, so maybe just go through it. I'll be uploading the paper that I've solved in a bit as well. Um, and that will basically be just all nine level questions. It's not just at Excel. It's going to be like overall, you're going to have at Excel, you're going to have CIE-based questions, AQA-based questions, or and all of it sort of mixed with only level nine slash A star star questions, which would be really, really good practice, whoever you are. So, yeah.